So my name is um, Reed Schaffner. I'm a product manager in the office team. I look after a couple things. I'm the product manager for Word, um, but more importantly for me, I also look after um, accessibility across uh, office altogether. Okay, so we're here today to talk about DAISY. Can you explain us what is DAISY, what it is all that about? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess the, the best way um, to start talking about this is to get into a history of why there was a need for DAISY or things like DAISY. So if you consider for a sighted user something like PDF or XPS, when you're sighted, um, you have a need to have things in a finished state. So for example, when you um, save as PDF to a sighted user, that's exactly what they see. They get all the information. They see the titles, they see the sections, they can see the images. So if you cut to a slide, immediately you have an idea of what all of the information means. Now, if I'm a blind user or a user who has some sort of print disability, um, I don't get that same benefit out of things like PDF or XPF. So today, or before DAISY was designed, I didn't have a way to consume a finished medium like a sighted user did. And so that's when DAISY um, and the need for it started to come about. So DAISY stands for the Digital Accessible Information System. Um, it started to, the need was really recognized around 1998, 1988 rather, and that was in Sweden, in the library for talking books in Braille. And so there was this need in libraries to have a sort of format that would support this digital playback that had rich semantic information. And when we say that, we mean things like titles, and styles and essentially everything that you visually get a representation from but that can be really well defined in XML so that it can be also heard uh, via playback. And then over time DAISY has uh, evolved and been adopted rather rapidly uh, in the US and worldwide. DAISY is a hugely uh, global organization which uptake around the world. Um, in the US it is uh, an ANSI NISO standard. Um, it's supported for all of the textbooks in the US and must be supported if requested. If you look elsewhere throughout the world, you have great user groups and great support. Um, as you can see on the slide that I think should be popping up somewhere over here by my head, um, the, and this is just a, a short list, and if you go to daisy.org, you can read a lot more, but the backing for the format is incredibly large, and it's incredibly valuable to this community um, that needs this sort of consumption method. And it's great kind of across uses, too. So uh, to start with the disabled community first, um, the ability to consume, whether it be novels or academic information or even training within an enterprise. So if you're an enterprise producer and you wanted to make sure that all of your users have access to the same information, DAISY is a great way to go about doing that. Um, but if you look in the larger consumer space too, there's this need for easy audio playback. Um, as is the case with most assistive technology, it's not something that just benefits um, users with disabilities, but it does have the potential to benefit the population as uh, whole. In fact, when I've done uh, speeches in the past with George uh, Kirscher, who's the Secretary General of DAISY, one of the things that he constantly brings up is that um, in the U.S. and across the world, you have to consider things like illiteracy, and sometimes this is just a great way to show people how to read and to help them consume information. Uh, that they wouldn't otherwise consume or be able to. Okay, so sounds very exciting. So now can you tell us uh, a little bit about what is the relationship between DAISY and OpenXML? Yeah, absolutely. So um, essentially with uh, the introduction of OpenXML, um, you make it really easy to move between these two XML-based formats. So OpenXML has great support for things like headings and styles and alt text and a lot of this information, this semantic information that we talked about early that you need to create a, a valid DAISY XML file. So what OpenXML allows us to do is to easily convert what is a typical standard editing format into this finished DAISY XML file. And so you take the 83 elements that DAISY has today, and it's really easy to pull them out of the uh, rich information that OpenXML has. Okay, so what did we do, uh, what did you do exactly to kind of build this bridge between DAISY and OpenXML? Yeah, so we're, um, we're building it right now. Uh, we released the first beta on, I believe it was January 25th, in fact it was January 25th, up on SourceForge. So what we're doing is um, we're essentially um, creating, and I will, I think now hopefully there'll be architecture slides appearing above my head somewhere, but what we've done is we've actually built the add-in inside of Word. Now we're building it on .NET, and um, as I'm sure a lot of viewers know, .NET was just released as well, so anybody can go look at that. 
But so what we're hoping is, is that because we built it on the .NET framework, that people will be able to use this on a variety of platforms and applications. Now the ones that, the application that we're building, or the add-in rather, is um, going to be available for Word, um, XP all the way up to 2007. On XP in 2003, you'll need the compatibility pack so that you can convert the OpenXML. But what we're doing is essentially um, we've created a, a converter that takes the, um, the OpenXML and just converts it directly to the DAISY XML. So from a user's perspective, um, one of the great benefits that we have in doing this is that before, one of the big benefits, to, or uh, rather barriers, to creating DAISY files was that cost of production was very high. And what we've done is we've made that really easy because now with the click of literally a save as button and uh, filling in a few inf uh, pieces of information like document title and you don't even have to fill these in you literally just click save and you have this daisy xml file and so that's what we've been building up on sourceforge and today um, we have support for most of the key elements so when we talk about these things that need to be moved um, back and forth between open xml and daisy i'm actually going to cut over to a uh, my blog, this is a shameless plug, you should go to this blog, it's a great <laughs> blog. But, um, so you look at what we had in the first version, and we have things like Dublin Core metadata, which uh, you look at things like language in this bucket, um, paragraphs, table, list, uh, notes and note references, images, validity, captions. Now this, this is something I want to point out, is that, and this is kind of, goes back to the role that standards play versus document standards versus an application in any of these accessibility um, contexts, is that the translator can only be as good as the information that it's given. So for example, in the case of images, if you don't put alt text on the image, the translator has no way of providing that information to a user who's consuming it through a daisy player. So it's very important that when you use the application, you take into consideration things like properly styled documents, adding alt text to images, um, and captions for tables, and so on. And uh, this is the case in any document that you may be trying to create for accessibility, but certainly when you're trying to create a good accessible uh, DAISY file.